Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, now it comes. Here it is, the handsaw. I doubt that this tool was there when the Chapayev saw service, but who cares? I liked the saw and I wanted something like this on my gas. I found these picks online and when I saw them I knew I'd have to build these tools. There's a PE set by Voyager model that includes saw and shovel. I want to extra detail this car entirely from scratch so buying a PE set isn't on my list. The only exception are the resin wheels. They wouldn't have been necessary but I liked them. As you can see, this looks a bit like a German tool clamp. There are different clamps in use for the shovel and that shows the improvised character of these tools. Here we see a different shovel but that's not all. The fire extinguisher looks British and I'm only guessing that this is a jack block. I built a shovel before. Along with a scratch built broom it was used on my Dio Paviera. Except for the Katyusha, the figures and one special item, everything else on the Dio was scratch built. For the saw I started off with a strip of masking tape. I sketched the shape of the saw blade on the tape. The angle is 10 degrees. The tip of the blade is 1.5 mm wide, the end is 2.5 mm wide and the blade is 11 mm long. For the blade I used a piece of thicker aluminum foil. I cut out the drawing and stuck the tape onto the foil. At the end of the blade I marked a strip of 1 mm that will be sitting in the handle. The cutting edge was marked too because I wanted to cut out real teeth. That went terribly wrong and when I measured the actual teeth I decided not to try it again. The next attempt was done by burnishing the aluminum foil onto a file I had attached to a wooden board. That didn't look too bad so I used the masking tape or the cutout in the tape to outline the blade. I cut out the blade in a 1mm strip of the same foil and I punched a tiny hole close to the blade's tip. Then it was time to build the handle. I outlined its shape on a piece of styrene sheet. After cutting it out I used the glue to attach it to a piece of thinner styrene. I left 1mm space for the blade. Then this was glued to the 0.5mm styrene again and cut out. Here you can see the resulting slot quite well. Some test fitting. I glued the strip to the end of the blade and cut it to size. This is the same foil I had used for the bonnet and I had real problems with gluing the vents into place. Now I had the same issues again with gluing the strip to the blade but this time I finally found out what caused these problems. The aluminum is coated with some rubber or silicon like material. This stuff also makes for deep scratches that can't be sanded out without removing the coating completely. I did that at a later point but I haven't decided yet if I'll use this foil again. Back to the handle. I punched two tiny holes into the upper layer to prevent the drill bits from moving around. The 0.9mm bit was used for the inner part of the cutaway and the 1mm bit for the edge of the handle. The rest was done with carving and sanding. Now all edges were smooth and rounded. Blade and handle were assembled but some sanding of the handle's top edge was necessary. After that was done I checked the fit of saw and car. It's the wrong side but that doesn't matter.
I forgot to mention the two tiny holes I had punched into the handle to represent the screws that I used to assemble their parts of an actual saw. They pop out after a wash and will surely do the job. To enhance the appearance of the fake teeth, I made short scratches along the cutting edge with the back of the tip of the number 11 blade. The size is very close to that of an actual medium sized handsaw. For the shovel I used a thin brass sheet I had bought just recently. My first scratchable shovel was made from aluminum foil but the brass isn't that flimsy so it was the better choice. The shovel's handle was made from a toothpick I had sanded thinner. The brass part was cut out and the handle was attached to the cutting mat. The handle was used to bend the center of the shovel into shape. By doing this the shovel's edges curled up into the desired shape. All that was left to do was adjusting the edges a tiny bit with flat pliers. Bending the center of the shovel resulted in a fair amount of scratches, dents and pits. I thought of doing it again, but this is a tool that's damaged by normal use, so I decided to leave it like that. It may look more realistic that way after a wash and some dry brushing. Then I sanded a slot into the handle's end and attached a short handle that was also made from a toothpick. Next thing to do was to glue the brass part into place and bend the upper bits around the handle. The shovel's length is realistic. Realistic, but a tiny bit too long to look good on the car. I removed the short handle on top and cut off 2 mm of the handle. Then the short handle was glued into place again. Still a realistic length. Two bolts were missing and I made them from silver plated copper wire. And now for the stuff that holds the tools in place on the car. I wanted to make a shoe for the saw's tip. First thing to do was making a bending tool. I used 0.2mm copper sheet that was folded to get a 0.4mm strip. Then I cut off the strip and attached it to the cutting mat. For the shoe I used thin brass sheet again. I marked the shoe size on my bending tool. I used masking tape to attach the brass sheet to the cutting mat in the correct position. I used a pair of flat pliers and tweezers to press the brass all around the copper. Then I cut out the shoe and cut off bits of the lower corners. The saw's tip fits nicely. I used a saw to mark the shoe's position on the right hand side of the car. Then I glued the shoe into place. This time I used CA glue gel because it's easier to control. It would have been very difficult to remove excess CA glue in this narrow area of the car's sidewall. Along with the Valin set, use Pioneer tools and racks, come 12 buckles that aren't needed to build the racks or other parts of the set. They came in handy for building straps for my pioneer tools. The piece thickness is what I like best about these old Evelyn sets. 
It isn't as flimsy as other PE parts are dealt with. You may call it too thick to be to scale, but even the usual 0.1mm PE parts aren't to scale. 0.1mm equals 3.5mm in reality. Most parts that are represented in PE are thinner than that. Anyway, the buckles were what I needed and there are a reasonable exception when I plan to scratch build every extra detail. The other parts for the straps are scratch built. I showed how to assemble straps and buckles in my tutorial on scratch build stowage, so I won't explain it again now. In this tutorial I also explained how to make buckles from copper wire. I glued the strap to the saw's handle and made sure that the buckle would sit on top of the handle. I wanted it to be fully visible. I glued a small piece of 0.1mm brass sheet onto the strap's underside. Both tools will be painted separately. These contact areas will make gluing them to the car a lot easier. Another tiny piece of brass was glued to the end of the strap. Tying the shovel to the car would be slightly different. As you saw in the reference pics, real clamps were used. That was a bit too much to be built from scratch. I tried it three times and the results were devastating. They were that bad that I didn't want to show them here. I decided to build a rather wide tie down instead to which I could attach one of the straps. I used 0.2mm copper sheet for the first attempt. I had scored the bending lines on their respective sides. Then I snapped off the strip by bending it along the long line several times. All I had to do was sending off the ridge along the edge. Then I bent the part into shape and I actually liked the result. This is how the shovel would sit on the car. It became clear at a glance that the shovel would be too far off of the car's body. These picks confirm my impression. Even with bending lines it would be extremely difficult to make a flatter tie down from copper. Another task for the brass sheet and the bending tool I had made earlier. Here I had marked where to cut off the excess brass. I guess it makes clear why I didn't want to use the copper tie down. I made another strap with one of the Verlinden buckles. The strap was glued to the tie downs on the side. The buckle will sit on top of the shovel. Then I glued the tie down into place. Again I used the a glue gel. That looked much better than the copper tie down. The strap for the shovel's handle was built accordingly to the one for the hand saw. And now a couple of pics of both tools and what they look like on the finished model. I hope I was able to give you some inspiration for building parts you can add to your models without having to buy custom PE sets.
I also hope that I was able to show you how simple this is. Cheap materials can be used to make these items look realistic. That's all, folks.